All right, hello everyone. My name is Brandon Griffin, and today I am going to walk you through the Tableau Superstore sample data set. And we are going to be creating a dashboard that looks like this. So this dashboard is for a Superstore like Walmart or something, or Target, and it's, uh, has a bunch of different information about different states. And what we're going to do, we're going to build a couple different dashboards. We're going to build um, some pivot tables, and we're going to put this all together. This is a really good introduction to Tableau, and it's a really good introduction to some of the powerful tools that Tableau has. Um, this video is made in October 2022. Um, I'm primarily making this for the class that I'm teaching. Um, but I know these uh, tutorials often update and change, so I just wanted to make one for this one. So what we're going to do, we're going to build this heat map, and we're going to make this really cool interactive tool tip that looks really nice. We're going to create a couple different um, filters, such as this region, so we can look at the dashboard by region and have everything else automatically updated with it as well. And then we're also going to have order date filter, profit filter, this profit ratio legend that looks really nice. And then these monthly sales by category that are also interactive as well. So when we select South Dakota, it shows South Dakota up here, down here, up there, you know, and everything looks really nice. So let's go ahead and get going. So you're going to go to your Tableau account. Um, you're going to go to your Tableau account, Tableau public, and you're going to go to create. And I'm using the web app. I actually really do like the web app. Um, Tableau Public's kind of like the light version, the, uh, yeah, just the light version of Tableau. Uh, you can use the desktop version, um, but I just like working with it in my browser. I think it's easier. You don't have to download anything. and has basically the exact same functionality. So the file that they give us is called uh, the Superstore Data. You probably can't see it on my screen. I'm using the Windows G to record, and it doesn't show the file folder, but it's called the Superstore File. Um, you can get that off their website, or I may post it a link below in the description. So what I did is I selected the sample Superstore data. And the first thing we have to do, if you look in the bottom left-hand corner of my screen, we're on data source here. And what we have to do, we have to tell um, Tableau what we want to work with. So in this Superstore data, we are given three different pieces of information. We're given the orders. If we click on the orders, little preview icon, we can see that we have the category, city, customer name, order ID, product ID, you know, tons of different information, the profit, the quantity, and the sales. So we have the orders, we have the people, and the people, my guess would be that these are just the salespeople. So Anna Andreati is West, Chuck McGee is East, Kelly Williams is Central, Cassandra Brando is South. Um, for this assignment and for this uh, tutorial, we're not going to use that, but we're going to use orders and returns. And when we look at returns, um, something that's really important to note out to note is order ID and return. Those are our only pieces of information. In Tableau, and when you're working with databases in particular, you need something that can connect your two worksheets together. So here, for returns, we have order ID. And we are going to be using this returns and this orders sheet. And we need to make sure that there is something that can link those two together. So similar in Excel, when you do a V lookup, you need you know your key or two things of information that match so you can pull other information. It's kind of similar. So order ID is what is in our returns. And we need to look at orders and make sure that there's something similar. So we have customer ID. That's not it. But we have order ID as well. So these should be able to link very well. Um, and Tableau is actually great at guessing what that link is. So take orders, take this sheet, drag it onto your view. So drag your table. And here it shows us um, where everything is. And because Tableau can um, piece together multiple pieces of information, multiple uh, worksheets, we're going to drag this return onto this view as well. And when you drag and drop it, orders and returns automatically are connected by this, what's called a noodle. This noodle right here um, is what connects orders and returns. And how it does that, or how do the uh, relationships are made is through the order ID is going to equal the order ID. Um, there are different types of relationships we can make with different operators, but here we can see order ID equals order ID. So these two, um, we'll be able to pull from. And in Tableau Public, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to do is create an, an extract. What it says here is an extract uh, will 
be created automatically when you switch to a different data source or when you switch tabs. And an edit extract basically just um, uploads the data, saves the data, so Tableau can work with it a little bit easier. Um, Tableau can automatically upload new data, can connect to external you know, sources like databases, but Tableau public, uh, you know, you have to upload a file. Um, so is it as dynamic? So it'll create an extract. So what we do, we're going to hit sheet one and automatically it's going to create an extract, you know, so it's importing the data from the orders plus our T1 sample superstore. And here it took about 10, 11 seconds. This file isn't very big. I think just a couple megabytes. We have our data source was created an extract and the extract includes all data up to October 28th at 1 31 31 p.m. So now we can begin working on our dashboard and first thing that we want to do let's go ahead and you know if we go back to our data source we can rename um, you know our data source we can rename our workbook so let's go ahead and let's change this from orders and let's just call this sample dash superstore sample dash superstore so our data is our sample superstore and then when we go to this sheet when we go to the sheet we can begin working on our oh, let me move that we can begin working on our um, data so here we have sheet one go ahead and double click and the first thing we're going to do is create a worksheet named profit ratio by geography we're not creating this we're just renaming sheet one so this is profit ratio um, by geography and what we have here is we're going to create that heat map that we saw so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to create a calculated field so we are going to go to analysis and we're going to create a calculated field so we want to show um, profit ratio profit ratio and when we come in here the profit ratio is simply going to be the sum of profit so you can type in profit and we can see that the sum it's, it's kind of like an Excel opens up with the parentheses but then it has brackets in or profit in brackets and we need to close out with another parentheses so profit is going to be divided by our sum of sales and when we type in sales we can see that we have an open parentheses, but we have the brackets and we have to close it with the close parentheses. So here it's going to be our profit divided by our sales. And when we hit OK, we can see that profit ratio now comes over here. We can see that it is the um, number sign, the hashtag with an equals next to it, showing that that is a calculated field. And that is what we want. That is what we want. All right. So with our profit ratio... All right, so with profit ratio, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to put in a map. So if you're on a PC, go ahead, hit control profit ratio and keep holding down control and select state. So profit ratio state, if you're on a Mac, you're going to hold command, command profit ratio, command state. And this show me button up here gives us some um, um, guesses as to what type of chart we want to insert. So the one that it recommends is a simple map, symbol map. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do just this map, the one that shows all the continents filled in. And when I hit that, it gives me a geographical map of the entire continental United States. If I zoom out, I don't think, you know, Alaska and Hawaii have uh, information. And it's true, they don't. So it gives us this heat map, which we want through Show Me. Show Me is really awesome, does some pretty cool things. So we inserted this map. And what we're going to do is we're going to change and adjust some things. So in this mark card, what we have right here, it says ag profit ratio, the aggregate of profit ratio. Aggregate is like a formula that we created. And let's go ahead and format this number. Because when we go to our chart right now, it says profit ratio is a decimal. Let's go ahead and have that look like a percentage. So we go to format number. Let's change that to a percentage and change the decimal place to one. So now if we were to look at the state of Wyoming, it says state Wyoming and the profit ratio is 6.3%. Um, there are a couple other things that we should do this to make it look a little bit better. For example, this legend right here shows the center point is kind of skewed. It's on the left and the blues, you know, way to the right. And I think it could be made a little bit better. It would be nice to just have it, you know, be even and have things be, you know, a little bit more balanced. So under uh, color, what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit colors. And the one that it uses in the video, and I think it looks good, it's called the orange blue diverging color. And 
you need to change the stepped color. So there's six steps. Um, so the colors between here, if you look at this bar, you know, six steps or six intermediate colors between blue and orange diverging. And when we go into the advanced settings, uh, we're going to change the profit ratio legend right here. Right now it says negative 21.7 down here to this um, 43.4, but we're going to make it so it's a little bit more balanced. So there's a little bit more uh, variability. So we go to start. Let's change this to be negative 0.5, so negative 50 if it's translated to a decimal, and the ending is 0.5. And we can see when we come up here, it's now like a balanced legend with the tick mark in the middle. And the center, we want to add zero. It's automatically that way. So now when we X out of it, our profit ratio is negative 50%, positive 50%. And things are beginning to look very good. And when we click on our state, we can see it's the name and the profit ratio. All right. One other thing we want to do is we want to add some filters here. So let's go ahead and bring our region and let's create a region filter. Um, what do we want to show in our filter? We want to show everything. Let's hit OK. And now the region filter is now in this region card, but it's not showing up on our worksheet. So go ahead and click the drop down arrow by region and hit show filter. And now we have this filter, but when we click on it, it just deselects one thing and I'd rather have it. So when you click something, it just highlights that. So let's go ahead, hit the drop down arrow next to region and let's change it from multiple values list to single value drop down. There are a bunch of different things you can do, but now if I do that drop down and select the central region, it only shows the central region. It excludes everything else. I think that looks nice. Let's go ahead and add one more filter and let's the aggregate profit ratio, the uh, calculated field that we created, let's actually make this a filter. So we're going to show the filter of the aggregated profit ratio and it automatically shows up, shows up here. So if we wanted to only look at states, you know, that had a positive profit margin, we could do that. Or in this case, if you only wanted to look at states that had a, you know, negative profit margin, or maybe your company has a profit margin of like 10%. So you could look at anything over 10% or anything under 10%. So that looks very nice. That looks very clean here and that completes our profit ratio by geography worksheet our dashboard is built up of i believe it's six different worksheets what we're going to do um, in tableau public you can't necessarily save that's one of the limitations of tableau light or tableau public um, so we need to publish you know so we can publish and it's going to ask us what we want to name this go ahead and name it sample dash superstore you can name it whatever you want but i'm doing sample dash superstore all right, and if you want to uh, protect your data source, you can embed a password for your data source. Um, and let's go ahead and publish. So anytime you're working on this, you're going to have to publish your worksheet. And now when you go to your uh, profile, um, it's going to show, um, you know, this uh, Tableau Superstore, the sample Superstore Tableau. Um, visualization this viz a viz is a visualization so next what we're gonna do we're gonna create a new worksheet called sales by category so down here let's hit the plus um, next to the graphs new worksheet and what we're gonna do we're gonna name this I double click on sheet 2 and I do sales by category so it's gonna show us a little bit more information so sales by category here and we see that it auto updates the um, name of the of the view all right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to select sales and order date. So we come down here to sales, this measure, and we come up to order date. And make sure you select both of them, control if you're on a PC or command if you're on a Mac, and you're going to go to show me. And we see a couple of these different uh, charts that it has, but let's go ahead and do the area charts continuous. All right, so here it just shows... Um, the sales per year, but we need to add more information so it looks a little bit nicer. So I'm going to click on this order date, and here we can change what it, change what it shows us. Here we can do it by year, and we can do it by quarter, we can do it by month, but that would be the total quarter. So that'd be quarter one for four years, you know, averaged together. This isn't quarter one of 2015, quarter two of 2015. This is quarter one of 2015, 16, 17, 18. You know, that isn't what I want. I don't think that looks good. That isn't really useful for me in this situation. So I'm going to go down here one more to month where it separates it's by month and year. By month and year. You know, and I can zoom it out a little bit to be quarter date, year date. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to keep it at that month of order date. And that looks nice. You know, but we want to 
add a little bit more information here. So let's go ahead and um, let's format the sale so it is a currency. So I'm going to go to the sum of sales. I'm going to format this number so it is a currency. And I want no decimal places. All right, and while I'm here filtering things, I'm going to get rid of this uh, title. I don't necessarily want this title, so I'm going to double click on this axis. Or another way, you can hit this drop down arrow, um, edit the axis. And the title, right now it says sales. I'm just going to delete it so it says nothing. So it's just blank. And when I hit the X, it gets rid of the title. And same with month of order date. I'm going to select month of order date, backspace, so it says nothing in there. Now, doesn't show the title anymore and that is beginning to look good so next what we're going to do we are going to create a level of detail calculation a level of detail calculation will add a little bit more information to our viz it'll make it look a little bit nicer so let's go ahead and create that all right to create that level of detail calculation that we're going to do we need to select order ID and we need to select profit and once we are on profit we can create LOD calculation, LOD calculation. Um, for some people it may show up, um, I've seen this before, where it may make you create a calculated field, um, but here on public it should say LOD calculation, level of detail calculation. All right, so what we're going to name this, we are going to name this order profitable. And what we want to do, we want this to run and return if an order is profitable or not. So if the sum of profit is greater than zero, it is profitable. So if I were to run this and based on the order ID, if the sum of profit for that order ID was greater than zero, it would be true. And the way that I'm talking about it being true, whether profitable or unprofitable, is we are going to go in and we are actually going to um, edit this order profitable. We are going to change the alias. Because remember, if order is profitable is true, that means it's greater than zero. If the sum of profit is less than zero, it's false. So instead of saying true false, what we're actually going to do is false would mean unprofitable. So if profit is less than zero, it's false, AKA unprofitable. We're kind of uh, translating it from code talk to, you know, interpretable information. So if our order or if the profit is greater than zero, it is profitable. So this is aliases. So instead of showing true or false, it'll show profitable and unprofitable. All right, and let's go ahead and take this order profitable and put it on the color mark in our card. And now we can see the level of detail. We've added some additional information. So now when it asks if the order is profitable, we have yes or no. And we have this little legend up here. Um, I don't love how, uh, I don't like the opacity, so I'm just going to make it 100. You know, so now we can see everything good and clear. All right, let's make sure legend highlighting is true so we can have that. So unprofitable is blue, profitable is orange. And if we wanted to, we could edit this and we could change some of the, these things. Uh, for example, we could edit the color. Um, you know, we could go in, we could edit some of the colors. So um, unprofitable is blue, profitable is orange. Um, we can assign the palette. But since, you know, typically we'd want profitable to be on top, we can switch that to be on top and we can have unprofitable be on the bottom. But really, it just depends on um, what your preferences are and, you know, what you think looks best. So um, we can have that and we can have it where it looks pretty good. But I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm just going to switch the order of these two, you know, so we can select profitable and unprofitable. All right. And that is what we have right there. So next, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add a category to the rows. We are going to add something before the sum of sales, we're going to add category. So we grab category right here and we're going to put it before sum of sales. And now our order profitable is broken up by categories by furniture, office supplies, and technology. So it's broken up a little bit. We can see things a little bit better. All right. So next, what we want to do is add a little bit more detail to our tooltip. So we have the sales and if it's profitable or unprofitable, but let's go ahead and add how much profit we got. So let's go ahead and grab profit right here and drag it to the bottom of our uh, 
bookmarks card and we can add it to our tooltip. So here, when we click on the tooltip, we can see that profit is now the sum of profits. So now when we use that tooltip, profit's now 4,432, but let's go ahead and adjust the number format so it is a currency. All right, and let's, you know, we don't necessarily need decimal places for this one. All right, that's looking good. So now we can see this. If we wanted to edit the tooltip, we could. We could go in here and we could bold some of these. You know, we could bold profit. We could, you know, we honestly probably don't need order date. Um, you know, we don't need category because it already says the category. So we could delete, you know, category. Order date might be good if you want that. And when we hit OK, it no longer says the category because we know categories are in here. Um, but we have this good looking chart now. All right, so one other thing I want to do is let's go ahead and add a filter for the month. So I went up here to this uh, month in the column and I added a filter. All right, and we have a filter with a range of dates. Make sure you show the filter. All right, so now we can filter the order date. All right, that looks good. And let's go ahead and make sure that filter is showing and let's publish. So we're saving this filter essentially. So go ahead and publish. And what we're gonna do is we are going to create a sales by segment worksheet. And instead of doing this whole entire thing over again, let's just go ahead and we right click on sales by category and let's just duplicate it. Cause we want the layout to be the exact same, but we're gonna do sales by segment. So go ahead and rename this sales by segment and where it says category, what I'm actually going to do so I'm going to grab segment and I'm going to place it right on top of category. And what that does is it actually replaces category with segment. So now instead of it being furniture uh, and all the other ones, I can't remember what it was. It was furniture, office supplies and technology. Now it's by segment. Is it the consumer, corporate, or the home office? And we still have the unprofitable, profitable, and the order dates. All right here. And we're actually done with uh, this other worksheet. So even though... You know, we just created a second worksheet, it took us about 30 seconds, now we're done. So go ahead and publish again. Just get in the habit of publishing, because um, Tableau Public, since it's in the cloud, that, that's one thing about using the browser. If you don't publish, you know, and you log off your computer for 30 minutes, take a break, go to the bathroom, whatever, you may come back and it may have deleted your work. So that's one of the negative sides. So go ahead and publish that. All right, and we are going to create uh, another worksheet. So down here, go to worksheet, and what we're going to name this, we're going to name this key performance indicators, KPIs, key performance indicators are kind of big numbers or big statistics that your company focuses on. For example, if you want to have a certain number of sales per day or a certain profit ratio or some sort of um, just wide information, you can have these key performance indicators. So we're going to be creating a text table, also known as a cross tab or also known as a pivot table. All right, so with our KPI, let's go ahead and calculate a couple fields. So we can go to the analysis button and we can create a calculated field. The first one we're gonna do is profit per order, profit per order. And what this is going to be, this is going to be the sum of, you know, profit. So we can type that in, or you can just follow the click menus, divided by the count D, so the count of, Order ID. Oh, I think there's a space in there. Yep, order ID. Close it with a bracket. So now we have sum of profit by order divided by the count D. Okay, that's one calculation and it comes down here on our measures, bottom at, bottom left hand. Um, you can see profit per order. And then we do analysis again. Let's create another calculated field and let's go ahead and do sales per customer. All right, and this one is going to be the sum of sales make sure we close it with brackets and this is going to be count d of customer name all right yep that is what it is and we close it and it says calculations valid hit okay and we see it pops down here again so that's exactly what we want all right so next what we're going to do is we are going to add some of our key performance indicators here and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drag all of our perf or all of our measure names up here so I can actually drag all of the measure names out here and it'll give me a ton of different information 
ton of different pieces of information. So I have the count of orders, returns, discount, profit, profit ratio, et cetera, et cetera. But in our uh, dashboard, this is going to be a horizontal thing that runs across the top. So let's go ahead and switch um, the top and bottom. Uh, go ahead and switch the um, rows and columns. So now our key indicators are simply just the total of orders, returns, discount, profit, profit ratio, et cetera, et cetera. All right, and what we're going to do, the first one we're going to do is we're going to have sales. So I'm just going to drag this on top, sales, and let's go ahead and format this as a currency with no decimal places. So sales is on top, currency. All right, let's get rid of those two decimal places. All right, next we are going to have the sum of profit. You know, so let's drag that underneath sales, and let's go ahead and format this as a currency with no decimal places. All right, currency, no decimal places, good, good, good. Next is gonna be our ag profit ratio, and this is gonna be formatted as a decimal with, or formatted as a percentage with one decimal place, excuse me, percentage as with one decimal place. Next is going to be the profit per order, this aggregated uh, function, this ag aggregated measure that we've created. So, and we're gonna format that as a currency with no decimal places so profit per order no decimal places all right after profit per order what we're going to do we're going to do sales per customer you know so we put that under there sales per customer let's go ahead and format this as a currency with two decimal places because um, we want a little bit more information here so let's do a currency two decimal places. All right, click out of that. And next we're going to do the average of discount. It says the sum of discount. So let's go ahead and change the measure to be an average. So it's average discount. I clicked on the arrow, went to measure and changed it to average. And next I'm going to go to format number. And let's go ahead and do this as a percentage with two decimal places. Drag that underneath sales per customer. And the last one we're going to do is the sum of quantity as a number with no decimal places. Everything else we're going to get rid of. But here, we don't really need to format it as a number with two decimal places, but let's just go ahead and do that anyways. And we're not going to do a count of orders or a count of returns. All right, and that looks good. Let's go ahead and change the fit to be... Oh, wrong one. Let's go ahead and change the fit. And let's go ahead and fit width. So it's going to drag across our entire worksheet. And that looks pretty good. Our key performance indicators. All right. So go ahead and publish. The next one we're going to do is actually, um, is actually yes, it's its own worksheet, but we're not going to use it as that. We're going to use it as its own tooltip. Um, so let's go ahead and let's create a new worksheet. And let's name this, we're going to name this something interesting. We're going to name this tooltip because it eventually is going to go in a tooltip. Tooltip, let's do profit ratio by city. So remember, we're looking at profit ratios and all the different information by state, but this will allow us to break it down a little bit more by city. So let's go ahead and we name the worksheet tooltip profit ratio by city. But let's change the top, the name at the top, the sheet name, uh, or the the title at the top of our worksheet from sheet name. Let's go ahead and name this profit ratio by city. So that one with the greater or less than and greater than sign, that's 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 kind of code, just telling it to uh, name it whatever the worksheet is called. So let's name this um, to be profit ratio by city. And let's go ahead and select city and profit ratio. So we have profit ratio down here. Let's go up, let's find city. And what we are going to do, we're going to enter the horizontal bars chart right here, this horizontal bars, click that, and it's going to show all this cool information, all this pretty cool information that we have right here. And so as we look at this, oh, let me unclick that. As we look at this, we can see that it is... Um, you know, showing all the cities, but it isn't really formatted well. And eventually this is going to go city by city within state. So let's go ahead and format this going from smallest to largest. So we can see Abilene for whatever has a negative 2.7. Someone's at the front door. All right. So let's go ahead and. All right. So. For whatever reason, Abilene is at negative 2.7%. Um, so what we want to do, this is uh, descend, or ascending. 
So it's going from smallest to largest. And we have this right here. So let's go ahead and uh, drag the profit ratio to the color shelf. So here we have profit ratio. Let's go ahead and put it on the color shelf up here. And we're going to do similar to what we had before. For color, uh, let's go ahead and do that orange blue diverging. Let's go ahead and you know change that to six steps like what we had before. And then for here, for start, let's go ahead and do the negative five, like negative 0.5, like we did. And the end is going to be the positive 0.5, center of zero. Oh, I did negative five. Do negative 0.5 positive 0.5 with the center of zero. All right, so now our legend is starting to look a lot more um, what we're doing, you know, better. So next, what we're going to do, we're going to go to the marks card and we are going to go to label and let's go ahead and show some labels. So now we can see the profit ratio by city is directly on there. One other thing we want to do, let's go to the ag of profit ratio. Let's go ahead and format that number. Let's do it as a percentage with one decimal place. So now we can see the profit ratio in Abilene is negative 270%. You know, that's a huge outlier. So something extreme probably happened. Um, you know, so we'd want to dig into that a little bit more. And then for the measure on this column shelf, let's go ahead and come here. Let's go ahead and get rid of the header. So we unclick the header so it no longer shows this x-axis. We don't necessarily need this. And then let's go ahead and disable the tooltip. So when we click on the tooltip, let's go ahead and disable that because this is going to go in a tooltip itself. All right. So we, were, we will insert this into the customer tooltip. So right here, let's go ahead and publish before we come over here. Let's publish. And what we're going to do, we're going to put this tooltip into the profit ratio by geography. So go to the profit ratio by geography worksheet, go to your tooltip, and we're going to customize this a little bit. So what we're going to do, we want it to show some information. We want to show a, kind of a breakdown by state. So I'm going to do is I'm going to insert or have it say state. I'm going to add a space, and then I want it to be the ag of profit ratio another space and it says overall so now in the shows it'll say california and then profit ratios 22 percent overall that's what it's going to show as next i'm uh next i'm going to put in the profit ratio by city which is this tooltip so i hit enter and i'm going to insert a sheet i'm going to insert a whole sheet which is this profit ratio by city and it gives me this um information right here so now when I hit OK and look over California, it says California 16.7% overall, you know, and we can look at all the individual cities. If we wanted to format this a little bit better, uh, let's go to our tooltip. We can go ahead and we can bold the state, you know, and I think it might look good if we, it, or if we italicize this ag profit ratio in overall. So now when we look at our state, you know, it looks a little bit better. If I wanted to do this even more, we can change the font. That might be a little bit better. We can do font, maybe Tableau bold. You know, so now when we look at the state, that's looking really good. It means California has a 16.7% overall profit ratio. And we could add that, that actually, uh, you know, overall profit ratio if we added that. So now we can look at Florida, negative 3.8% overall profit ratio. And we've added all this information and it's looking very good. So we have created all of the work sheets that we need for our dashboard. And now let's actually put it together. So under uh, here at the bottom, we see three different things that we can enter. One is a worksheet. Second is a dashboard and the third is a story. We've been creating worksheets. The dashboard is, you know, the interactive dashboard with all these put together. A story is basically like a PowerPoint presentation mixed with you know, Tableau dashboard, it kind of tells a story, but we're going to create a dashboard. So go ahead and create a dashboard and let's go ahead and name this executive overview. So if we want to communicate this information to people higher ups in our organization, people outside our organization, you know, this is just the executive overview and they don't need to see each one of these individual worksheets or, you know, they probably don't even want, um, they probably don't even want information that are entire company. So let's go ahead, or we don't want them to see our entire company. So let's go ahead and change the size on our left side. Uh, normally it can be fixed. So you can, you know, kind of do it uh, by 
uh, device. So you can do it as a generic desktop, um, desktop browser, full screen, PowerPoint, etc. But let's just do automatic. So no matter what uh, device they're on, uh, if it's mobile, no matter how it's being applied, it's just going to automatically fit. And let's go ahead and add some objects. So let's go ahead and add a vertical object to the view. So we just put this in here and we're going to insert our KPIs, our key performance indicators. So in our, perf in our vertical object, we insert our key performance indicators, and this is kind of like the header for our um, dashboard. Next, we're going to do a horizontal object below the KPIs, and let's go ahead and insert the profit ratio by geography. So we have profit ratio by geography. That's looking pretty good. That's looking pretty good. All right, so next what we're going to do, we're going to add another horizontal object below the profit ratio geography sheet. So we're going to do um, horizontal and make sure it goes under and make sure it drags the entire distance not just underneath the map but across the entire thing so here if I can get it here you can see that it just goes to the map but here it goes across the entire bottom so let's do that and let's go ahead and add the sales by segment or let's let's go ahead and do that yeah sales by segment all right sales by segment there we go and then let's add a horizontal object right of cells by segment. All right, just make sure it's not across the entire thing, but just to the right of it. So we see how the gray is only the cells by segment. So let's do cells by segment. Then we're going to do cells by category. And they kind of share that space right there. <clears throat> All right, so we have cells by segment, cells by category. All right, and there are a couple things we're going to do to make this look a little bit neater, a little bit cleaner. We can see there are two order dates, so we're going to get rid of one of those. If we click on it, this drop-down arrow, arrow comes, um, and we can remove this from the dashboard. Order profitable is good, um, but we probably want these two next to each other. So let's go ahead and uh, make this look a little bit better. Let's have order date. Um, let's go ahead and put that on top as order you have to grab right here. Let's do order date up top. And right here it says month of order date. That was a mistake I made in the, um, I believe it was the sales by segment, you know, month of order date. So here I have month of order date and I did that filter, but here I did the month of order date filter. So if I get rid of it and just add the regular order date uh, filter, so right here, I could drag this order date to be a filter itself, um, you know, and I can do a range of dates. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll go ahead and fix that. And we have all these. Hit OK, range of dates, and let's go ahead and get rid of this month order date filter, you know, so we can remove this at the bottom. And then let's make sure we show this order date. All right, so now when we go back, that should be updated too. So month of order date, you know, we can go ahead and X that out. And we can get some of this other information in there. So that was on our, where did I fix that? Sales by segment. All right, so if we go to sales by segment, I should be able to, let's see, I should be able to delete this or remove this from the dashboard and then put sales by segment just to the left of sales by category and here we have our order date show back up um, and let's go ahead and put order date at the top and then we have our profit ratio uh, the slider and then this profit ratio and we don't need this filter right here so let's go ahead and get rid of it all right so next what we're going to do we're going to make this dashboard look a little bit better let's go ahead and select this entire uh, filter zone is what i call it. i don't know what it's actually called let's drag and click and take this entire thing and let's put it next to our map so our the kpis you know are dragged across the entire top and are looking pretty good all right that is looking pretty good one issue that we have here now though is when i select region it only does the uh, worksheet that it came from it only filters out the worksheet that it came from so where region i have all uh, order date profit ratio i want to it's almost like report connections in excel but i want it to apply to um, all the worksheets that are using this data source so i go ahead and i do that for region let's go ahead and do it for 
um, this order date, all that are using this data source. Let's go to profit ratio. Let's go ahead and apply to all using this data source. And then finally, this profit ratio. I don't think it'll show anything. Nope, it doesn't. All right, so we have created this dashboard, but it's not quite done. Let's go ahead and do a couple more things and let's add an action. An action will allow us to do some cool stuff. So right now we can use the filters here, but if I, if I wanted to you know, look at Minnesota and look at their sales by segment and the sales by category, it doesn't automatically update that stuff. I need to create an action. So what I am going to do, I am going to go under the dashboard and I'm going to do actions. Um, and I'm going to add a filter and what I'm going to do and as I am going to name this uh, filter the state filter. So the source that it's coming from is going to be the profit ratio by geography. So only select the profit ratio by geography, deselect everything else, and let's run the action when you select a state. You know, you don't want it to run when you hover over it, select it. So you have to click a state before it'll run. And where is it going to run or where is it going to apply to? Let's do it everywhere except the profit ratio by geography. Let's go ahead and show all values. So we do show all values. Show all values. And next we have to say what the filter is. Let's go ahead and click to add the selected fields. And let's go ahead and scroll down to state. So we've deselected everything but profit ratio by geography. We've run the action on select. We have our target sheets is everything. Um, except for profit ratio by geography, and we have show all values. All right, so finally we have our filter as selected fields. We hit OK, and now when we hit OK twice, when we select the state that we want, for example, Minnesota, it now updates all of this other information. So we see our sales category, sales by segment. If we do Texas, our KPIs, update as well and that is looking great all right so uh, we've done a lot of work since we've uh, published so let's go ahead and publish it again remember don't publish 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 and that should look good all right and let's go ahead and change some of these titles a little bit um, so let's go ahead and change the key performance indicator let's go ahead and instead of being the sheet name let's do executive overview and then let's name this profitability and then in parentheses, we're going to put in state. So do your parentheses, and we're going to insert state. And this is going to make it interactive. So whatever state we choose, it'll show. So now up here, it's showing the profitability of all or of everything. Now when I do Washington, it just shows Washington. So let's go ahead and do some other stuff. All right, so we're going to change. Let's do profit ratio map let's go ahead and we don't necessarily want or need a title here so let's go ahead and deselect the title you know they kind of know what they're looking at here so sales by segment let's go ahead and change sales by segment let's go ahead and change this to be monthly sales by segment you know and we're going to do states then let's do colon and then again let's insert the state so let's insert the state Hit OK. So now it shows monthly sales by segment all. Let's do the same thing for sales by category. Let's do this monthly sales by category. Let's go ahead and do dash states, states, colon, and then we're going to insert the state. So now when I hit OK, it shows all of this awesome, awesome information. And our dashboard is complete. So let's hit publish and let's go ahead and look at what we have. Let's see you know, our finished uh, thing in motion. It's, it's, I, I can't see anything over here. The thing that I'm using to record is up here. All right, so what we can do, we can close this workbook. So let's go ahead and close. So let's go ahead and close. And now we can see profit ratio by geography. Um, but when we click on me, this is who I am. We can see this sample superstore data. And now when we click on this dashboard, we have this dashboard here. So it's interactive. We can see Minnesota, Apple Valley had the lowest uh, overall profit ratio of 6.5%, but the state had 36.2 overall percent. We can filter by region. So if I care about the Western region, I'd be able to look, see the profit ratio is 14.9. 
Um, we can look if it's profitable or unprofitable. We use those aliases. Um, and things are looking really, really good here. So a couple things you can do in Tableau Public. Um, you can show the viz sheets as tabs if you want. And you can you know, show on your profile. Obviously, if you want to share this with people, show it on your profile. But one thing that's cool, what I do for my students, is I deselect allow access. So I don't let others download or make a copy of this viz. Because if I did, you know, people could just download it, they could re-upload it, and this is assignments that multiple classes do, you know, so that'd be cheating. So I just help to deter that from allow access. So this is the tutorial to do the uh, executive overview profitability dashboard for the Superstore sales. Um, good luck with Tableau. Comment if you have any questions, um, but I'll see you next time.